tall, handsome as hell. There's so few of us out there, ladies. <laughs> Shakedown 1979 Cool kids never had the time On a live wire right across the street You and I should meet June skipping All right, folks. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Andy here. It is evening time. It's been a long day. Maybe it's been a long day for you as well. I thought, let's settle in with some Taylor Swift. Today I'm going to listen to my third song by her. Uh, it is highly recommended, one of many things highly recommended. By the way, I got to say, I love, love, love your enthusiasm on the Taylor Swift videos. Thank you guys so much for checking them out and telling me what you like and what you think about them. It's really helpful. Everyone's really kind, which I know seems weird, but it is on YouTube. So um, really great to have all that positivity and love that you love your girl like that, um, especially because I'm new to her music in a lot of different ways, as I've explained in other videos. And, um, you know, pop music for me in general is usually I have to kind of get into that mind frame. And I recognize that I'm a judgy, lame guy when it comes to being a music snob. Okay, <laughs> I recognize that about myself. I'm fighting it every day, folks. And you're helping me. People have been talking a lot about her Grammy Museum concert. And so today we're going to check that out. So today we will be checking out her song Wildest Dreams from that concert. Okay, it has a little um, blurb here. On September 30th, Taylor Swift celebrated her attendance record-breaking exhibit at the Grammy Museum with an intimate performance at the Clive Davis Theater. September 30th, I have no idea what year. Tell me the years, guys. They're like, well, just look at the thing. Look at down at what year the video was made. Well, tell me the year in the blurb. Why do I have to... <laughs> so I guess her exhibit at the Grammy Museum was the attendance breaking thing. I see. So she has a there's a I don't know anything about the Grammys. I'm not insulting the Grammys. Apparently there's a Grammy Museum, makes perfect sense and her exhibit there probably just got more attendance. I'm I'm like translating this for myself. I recognize everybody else understands what this means. I'm not as stupid as I may seem, but I am very stupid in certain ways. This is called Wildest Dreams. Oh, and she's using a... Okay. It's electric guitar. I didn't realize it's electric guitar. Everyone, relax. All right, that's so uh, rare and random. You know, you so rarely see like somebody just with an electric guitar. You'll see people like just do acoustic sets, but it's, ra it's rare just to see a person with no accompaniment and just an electric guitar. Jaguar of some kind. Cool. Cool looking Jaguar. Okay, sorry. Let's do it. He said, let's get out of this town, drive out of the city, away from the crowds. I thought heaven can't help me now, nothing lasts forever. Okay, cool. Um, probably my favorite song I've heard of her so far. Mm -hmm. 
Real simple melody. C to E minor to D. Now again, she's not playing really complex chord changes. What she does, though, is interesting, and she's good at this technique. She varies up her singing style and her playing style so much that it adds these extra layers of nuance. First thing, mad respect for doing just a spot with her and a Jaguar, like going through probably a, a you know, twin reverb or something, a Fender amp. Now, a lot of people say, well, electric guitar is easier to play because the, the strings aren't as thick. They aren't as hard to press down as an acoustic generally is. That's generally speaking the case. When you're playing an electric, the neck size is different, often a little bit thinner. You have less room to maneuver in between the strings. So you can play a lot quicker, so it lends itself to, you know, quick little noodly guys, but um, it doesn't, it's not quite as useful for strums, just because you have less room for the strings to actually maneuver between each other. Um, the other thing is is that you hear every little nook and cranny of how the, the, the finger fits on the string. So you hear more string noise, so this type of stuff in between chords. And it looks like she goes to G on the chorus. Something like that. At the very beginning, she's singing very low. She's singing. You can hear me having trouble hitting those notes down there. And I presumably have a deeper voice than she does. But she has much more control over her lower registers. Uh, and she's able to kind of give that almost dark feeling of like. Let's hear it again. Very intimate kind of sound, just her and the electric. He said, let's get out of this town, drive out of the city, away from the crowds. I thought heaven can't help me now, nothing lasts forever. But this is gonna take me down, he's so tall, handsome as hell, he's so bad, but he does it so well, I can see the end. Uh, tall, handsome as hell. There's so few of us out there, ladies. If you get one, try and hold on. I'm kidding, of course. Um, so she does that that first part. Do 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 do. So she goes. I'm gonna try it here. Do 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 do. See, I can't get down there. I don't know how that part goes, but then she goes right to the top of her range and cuts through that kind of murkiness at the bottom. I love that. Again, we're not changing the melody drastically, if really at all. The melody is just kind of taking on a new shape. She writes songs, I think people say it's repetitive. Um, I could hear that criticism, but I also kind of think that she layers things. Like it's a song about cycles, it seems like. And the song, her songs kind of roll forward and develop as they go rather than having extraordinarily specific verse pre-chorus chorus bridge you know what i mean like of course she do, can do all those things but her songs really just seem like always of a piece like it's this is this is this particular emotion this is this particular story and this is the song that it comes from and as somebody who performs I understand that impulse because you want to you want to have a song kind of encapsulated. You want to have it there, you can go to it and this is how you play this song because it has to be something that you bring with you. Uh, this sounds uh, this sounds so weird and flighty. I know what I'm saying right now. Hey folks, Andy here. I just wanted to clarify this point here while I'm looking so dashing. What I'm trying to say is as a singer-songwriter, you have fewer options to dazzle your audience. And sometimes it doesn't work to try to do incredibly complex chord changes or incredibly diverse sounding songs because you're so limited. So I think what might sound repetitive to some people are people who are maybe just not as used to seeing live performers who are just there with their guitar. That's all. So I start the song low. Maybe people even lean in a bit, trying to hear me. And I come over the top, and I, same, same key, one octave up. 
changes how you're hearing the song, changes the perspective of the, of the song, changes how you're hearing her. Again, there's kind of like a sarcasm to it. This very sad song about this clearly ended relationship. And she's kind of discussing him in these kind of superficial ways, you know. Well, he's tall and he's handsome and he's he's a bad boy and does it so good, you know. Like, you know, spoiler alert, ladies. <laughs> Those men might slowly become less attractive to you over the years. They might not. Bad boys need love too. Everybody, everybody needs love. <laughs> no hate to the bad boys out there. Um, but uh, it seems to me like Taylor Swift is saying, you, you know, this 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 person is really fleeting and she has this kind of interesting way of wanting to be remembered. Like this relationship is ending and I need you to remember me a specific way. And how do we remember her? Well, she's standing in a nice dress. She has rosy cheeks and red lips it's like as if she's saying, like, I'm going to idealize you, so you idealize me. I said no one has to know what we do. His hands are in my hair. His clothes are in the room. And his voice is a familiar sound. Nothing lasts forever. But this is getting good now. He's so tall, handsome as hell. He's so bad. Okay, a lot of cool things there. It's almost a very sweet and innocent song. Remember me, picture me as this idealistic, you know, I'm staring at the sunset and I, and I look kind of like a mirage or something. That's how she wants to be remembered. But then there's also this part of the song where she's like describing, you know, being tangled up with you all night and hair, hands in my hair and his, his uh, clothing on the floor. In the morning, just as it's getting good, it ends, which is kind of a funny, kind of sarcastic thing. Or that's kind of what I hear her saying. I could be wrong, but um, that she's saying like, yeah, that's all good stuff. You know, hooking up is fun, but it always ends in the morning and no one has to know what we do and all those other kind of things that people say when they don't really want to be with you. They just kind of want to use you. 
and this doesn't have to be a sexual thing. This can be this can be any variety of of relationships where people just don't want to be publicly available to you. That's a really really good sign to like not be in that relationship. Um, but it sounds like she has experience with that. That's what it sounds like to me. She varies up her delivery and she varies up the emotion in each part that it actually, to me, it draws out the differences in those sections. The fun of it, the sexy naughtiness of it, the badness of it. <laughs> uh, maybe not sexy naughtiness, but you know, the, the kind of risque, the funness of it. But then also the horrible withdrawal from it and the rejection that maybe she feels in the morning you know she's kind of talking like a dude talking down here no one has to know what we do that's a very like that's something you say when you're <laughs> it's a very poetic way of saying like we can't know let people know that we're together right people don't need to know what we do yeah i guess you're right people don't need to know what we do yeah I mean, we could also, like, you could list me as your girlfriend on Facebook or whatever. It's like we live in a world where everybody needs to know and if they're everything all the time. Oh, I got to know who this person's dating. I got to know who that person's dating. Wow, that's interesting. Now I think about it. Maybe that's what she's saying about, like, she, you can't, she can't date anybody because she's just, like, this giant celebrity pop star who everybody has intense opinions about. Why do people have such intense opinions about her? It's interesting, because her music is is not like is not bad, a, eh? and it's not like it's it's emotional. Like she's real. Like she's a real person who has real thoughts about what it seems like or this little box that she kind of is is painted herself into. Of course, I'm reading a lot into this song, but you know, good songs kind of do that. So this is definitely my favorite Taylor song so far. Cool stuff. Um, I will check out, and I'm going to check out more stuff from the Tiny Desk concert. I'm doing these as fast as I can, I promise you guys. And I'm going to do as many more as I possibly can. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Please like, please subscribe, please let me know other ideas for songs, either by Taylor or other people. I'm not going to call it like I know her. Either by Taylor Swift or other artists. Good suggestions, everybody. We'll see you next time.